Welcome. This demonstration is brought to you by Digital Den. In this demonstration, you will use the AWS Key Management Service to encrypt data at rest. You will create an AWS KMS key and use it to encrypt Amazon Elastic Block Store volumes. You will also see how AWS CloudTrail provides an audit log of AWS KMS key usage and how disabling the key affects data access. After completing this demo, you should be able to create an AWS KMS customer managed key to encrypt and decrypt data at rest. Monitor encryption key usage by using the Cloud Trail event history. Launch an Amazon EC2 instance with an unencrypted root EBS volume attached. Encrypt the root volume of an existing Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud Amazon EC2 instance. Disable and re enable an AWS KMS key and observe the effects on data access. Let's get started. First, launch an EC2 instance with an unencrypted root EBS volume attached. In the AWS Management Console, choose Services, choose Compute, and then choose EC2. Choose the Launch Instance menu and select Launch Instance. Give the instance a name. In the list of available Quick Start AMIs, Keep the default Amazon Linux AMI selected. Also keep the default Amazon Linux 2023 AMI selected. In the instance type panel, Keep the default t2.micro selected. For key pair name choose proceed without a key pair. In this demo you will not actually need a key pair to log into your instance. In the network settings section, keep the default settings. In the configure storage section, keep the default settings. Amazon EC2 stores data on a network attached virtual disk called Elastic Block Store. You will launch the Amazon EC2 instance using a default 8 GB disk volume. This will be your root volume, also known as a boot volume. You can encrypt a volume attached to an EC2 instance when you first create the instance, but by default it is not encrypted. You can also encrypt a volume that is attached to an existing EC2 instance, including to the root volume but it requires a few more steps. You will complete those steps later in this demo. At the bottom of the summary panel on the right side of the screen choose Launch Instance. You will see a success message. Next, create a customer managed AWS KMS key. The AWS KMS key that you create will be used to generate, encrypt, and decrypt data keys. The data keys will be shared with Amazon EC2. The data keys will be used to encrypt the actual data stored in and on EBS volumes. Navigate to the AWS KMS console. In the navigation pane, choose Customer Managed Keys. Choose Create Key. For key type, choose symmetric. Symmetric keys never leave AWS KMS unencrypted. The key that you create will be a 256-bit secret key. Choose next. For alias, enter my KMS key. Choose next. For key administrators, choose your IAM user. 
Key administrators are users or roles that will manage access to the encryption key. Choose Next. On the Define Key Usage Permissions page, choose your IAM user again. Key users are the users or roles that can use the key to encrypt and decrypt data. Choose Next. At the bottom of the review page, choose Finish. Your key displays in the list of customer managed keys. You might see an older key or older keys in this list, with the status pending deletion. The minimum amount of time that must transpire between when you request that a key be scheduled to be deleted and when it's actually deleted is 7 days. Congratulations, you created an AWS KMS key. Next, you will monitor AWS KMS activity by using CloudTrail. You will access the CloudTrail event history to find events that are related to your encryption operations. The CloudTrail audit log functionality provides an important security feature, and it's a good idea to monitor how AWS KMS keys are used in your account. Navigate to the CloudTrail console. In the navigation pane, choose Event History. CloudTrail provides an audit log of API calls that are made in the AWS account. The event history provides access to events from the last 90 days of account activity. Notice the column named Event Source. Each time that an API call to an AWS service occurs within the region that you have selected, if that service reports such events to CloudTrail, then the event and the AWS service that reported the event are listed. Now, Filter the event history to display only events that the AWS KMS service reported. Choose the drop-down menu on the left that currently displays read-only, and choose Event Source. In the Enter an Event Source search box, search for KMS and choose KMSAmazonAWS.com. Next, analyze the Create Key Event. Choose the link for the Create Key Event name. In the Event Record section, observe the details of the event. This appears to be an AWS CloudTrail event that documents the creation of an AWS Key Management Service Key. The event contains information about the user who created the key, the date and time when the key was created, the AWS region where the key was created, and the key's configuration, such as its usage and the permissions granted to users to access it. The event also includes the response elements, which provide metadata about the newly created key, such as its ID, ARN, creation date, and other properties. Now, you will encrypt the root volume of an existing EC2 instance. To encrypt an unencrypted volume, you need to complete multiple steps, which are as follows. Stop the instance. Detach the volume. Create a snapshot of the unencrypted root volume. Create a new encrypted volume from that snapshot. Swap the encrypted volume in as the new instance root volume. And finally, start the instance. Next, observe the current storage settings on the EC2 instance you launched earlier. Navigate to the Amazon EC2 console. And in the navigation pane, Choose Instances. Choose the link for the Your Instance ID. Choose the Storage tab. In the Block Devices section, Notice that the volume that is attached indicates it is not encrypted. This is the root volume, which contains the guest OS installation. You can encrypt a volume attached to an EC2 instance when you first create the instance. You can also encrypt a volume that is attached to an existing EC2 instance, including to the root volume, but it requires a few more steps. You will complete those steps next. Now, stop the instance. In the breadcrumbs at the top of the page, Choose Instances.
Select Digital Den Instance and choose Instance State. Stop Instance. To confirm the action, choose Stop. Now, create a snapshot of the root EBS volume of the existing EC2 instance. Choose the Storage tab. In the Block Devices section, choose the link for the volume ID. Choose the link for the volume ID again. Note the availability zone where the volume exists, for example, EUS2. You will need this information in a moment. Choose Actions. Create Snapshot. Choose Add Tag, and for Key, enter Name. For value, enter unencrypted root volume. Choose Create Snapshot. Next, create an encrypted volume from the unencrypted snapshot. In the navigation pane, under Elastic Block Store, choose Snapshots. Choose the link for the unencrypted root volume snapshot ID that you just created. Wait until the snapshot status shows completed. Notice that the encryption status of the snapshot is not encrypted. Choose Actions. Create volume from snapshot. And configure the following. For availability zone, choose the availability zone where the existing volume exists. Select encrypt this volume. For KMS key, choose my KMS key. Choose create volume. Now, label the volumes. In the navigation pane, under Elastic Block Store, choose Volumes. Notice that two volumes are now listed. For the volume with a volume state of in use, change the volume name. Hover on the Name field, and choose the pencil and paper icon. In the Edit Name box, enter Old Unencrypted Root Volume. Choose Save. Follow the same steps to change the name of the volume with a volume state of available to new encrypted root volume. Now, swap the root volume that the EC2 instance uses. Select Old Unencrypted Root Volume. And then choose Actions. Detach Volume. To confirm, choose Detach. Select New Encrypted Root Volume. And then choose Actions. Attach Volume. And configure the following. For instance, choose your stopped instance. For device name, enter slash dev slash xvda. This is the device name where the existing instance expects to find the root volume. Choose Attach Volume. Notice that the root volume is now encrypted. Return to the Instances screen, and select your instance.
Choose the Storage tab, and notice that the attached volume is now encrypted and has a AWS KMS key ID. You might need to refresh the page to see the latest information for the attached volume. Congratulations, you encrypted the root volume of an existing instance so that the data on it is now more secure. Finally, you will temporarily disable the AWS KMS key that you previously used to encrypt an EBS volume. You will then observe the effects that disabling the key has on accessing encrypted data. Navigate to the AWS KMS console. And in the navigation pane, choose Customer Managed Keys. Select my KMS key, and then choose Key Actions. Disable. To confirm the action, select Confirm that you want to disable this key, and then choose Disable Key. Now, try to start the EC2 instance. Navigate to the Amazon EC2 console and choose Instances. Select your instance, and then choose Instance State, Start Instance. Use the Refresh icon to monitor the instance state. It will quickly fail to start and the instance state will change from Pending to Stopped again. Next, analyze the Cloud Trail event history. Navigate to the Cloud Trail console. In the navigation pane, choose Event History. Choose the link for the disable key event name. Examine the event details. The details show that you disabled the AWS KMS key a few minutes ago. Examine the Start Instances event, which occurred just after the Disable Key event. The request to start the instance was successful. However, as you experienced, the instance never reached the running state. Examine the Create Grant event, which occurred just after the Start Instances event. Notice that the event details reveal an error. The EC2 instance start process noticed that the root volume was encrypted with the MyKMS key. So Amazon EC2 contacted AWS KMS to provide the plain text data key so it could decrypt the volume. But AWS KMS denied the request because the AWS KMS key that was used to encrypt the data key that the EBS volume was encrypted with was disabled. The instance can't start because the files on the root volume that the guest OS needs to start couldn't be decrypted. Now, Return to the AWS KMS console and re-enable the My KMS Key Customer Managed AWS KMS Key. Return to the Amazon EC2 console and start the instance again.
The instance successfully starts now. Congratulations! You have completed the lab.